This is Richard Wolf with another Wolf Responds. I'm brought to you by Democracy at Work, and here we are, 10 weeks, 9 weeks before the election. And tempting as it might be to talk about the election, I really want once again to talk about the more basic economic realities. So I'd like to call this brief report to you, Capitalism on Life Support. Here's how I want to present it. <clears throat> I want to show you how dependent the economy today is on the government. What a total and complete mockery it makes of libertarian, right-wing, pro-capitalist notions that the private sector is what makes the economy successful and the government is an inefficient, inappropriate, unwanted intervener. This fantasy, this ideology, has been around a long time. It was always untrue, but it is now laughably untrue, and that needs to be explored, understood, and shared. Of course, I know that the blame for the economic catastrophe we're living through will, of course, be assigned to the government by those who are unwilling or unknowing or simply afraid to confront the scary reality that the system we grew up in is exhausted and is falling apart and no longer serves, if it ever did, the majority of our people. So let's go through quickly. Every corporation in America, with very few exceptions, is now desperately in debt. The level of corporate debt is greater than it has been in the history of the United States. And what is important to now understand is that a huge part of that debt is being carried by the government. It is buying, directly and indirectly, the corporate bonds that are issued by companies that are their IOU. Another example. The Federal Reserve has created trillions of dollars, poured them into the economy, telling us it was in order to get the economy going again and to employ people. It isn't doing that. Where is it going? Where is it creating the feared inflation that always accompanied rising quantities of money, or so we were told? Well, the inflation is happening, but it's happening where rich people want it to happen, in the stock market, driving up prices as people borrow almost zero interest, all this new money from the Federal Reserve, and then buy and sell each other's stocks, each time at a slightly higher price. You used to call this a bubble in the stock market, and we all know where bubbles end. They get burst. And on Thursday, the, the uh, 3rd of September, we saw how close we are to the bubble bursting. Let me continue. The economy has been in terrible shape, tens of millions unemployed, but it would have been much, much worse were it not for several things that the government did, underscoring the mass of our people. The extra $600 for people on unemployment every week, absolutely crucial as the entire market for retail in this country now understands. This kept businesses, stores, restaurants, to the degree that they could be open at all, going because people had some money to spend. But of course, it wasn't enough. And at the end of July, it wasn't renewed. So that's not there anymore. Well, what else is there? Well, the government is stepping in yet again. Any home that is insured by the uh, Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac or any of the other government agencies, the people who are holding mortgages that are insured by them don't have to make their monthly mortgage payments for months yet to come. They don't have to not ever pay them. They will owe them at the end of a period, but they have what's called forbearance. So suddenly you can use what little money you have 
for maintaining your food and clothing because you don't have to pay your mortgage. And for the people at the lower half of the American distribution of income, the mortgage is the biggest single payment they otherwise would have had to make. Renters are getting moratoria. Again, to the end of the year, they'll still have to pay the rent they haven't. And that rent may be raised while they're waiting so that their bill at the end of the December of this year will be even larger than simply adding up the rental per month they didn't pay. But you get the picture? Supports for everything about this economy. Supports of the companies that supply goods and services, massive supports, and supports for the mass of people who buy goods and services. The corporations get the bulk of it. The rich get richer. We all know that. We're watching it. But the whole system, even those at the bottom, are now being supported by the government because private capitalism can't do it. What else do we see? We see a system that besides keeping the economy on life support, literally, is causing this country to lose its major cities, to reorganize its entire life, to have millions of people interrupt their their educations and perhaps never return. I mean, we are shaking the country to its foundations. And yes, of course, we will blame the disease, the pandemic, the virus. But who are we fooling? This is a system that didn't prepare for the virus. It could have. It should have. We've pointed that out. You could have stockpiled the masks and the ventilators and the hospital beds and the quarantine locations. You could have had all that set up. The government could have come in and bought all those things, even letting the private producers make a profit and then hold them until we need them. But they didn't do that. The private companies didn't make and hold those things because it's not profitable. And the government didn't step in and do it for them the way the government does for military preparedness, buying and owning and monitoring and maintaining the guns and the ships and the planes and the missiles. We are protected all the time against a military assault, but we are a failure in preparing for the virus, which we then compounded politically by not being successful at containing the virus either. Basic fact. The United States has 4% of the world's people and 25% of the COVID cases and the COVID deaths. That's a failure for any country, but a failure for a rich one, you bet. And what do we say about capitalism's relationship to all of this? Capitalism used to pride itself on being efficient. Well, you know what efficient would have meant? Stockpiling all the things we need, being prepared. It would have been much cheaper to do that than to suffer the losses in life in health, and in dollars that we have already saw uh, suffered, way more than any estimate of the cost of being prepared and being willing to take the steps needed to contain the virus. This will be looked upon, this period of American history and of capitalism's history, as a nightmare that did not have to happen a nightmare in which the failures of capitalism multiplied the problems of a virus. It is capitalism on life support, held up by a government which in the long run is not a viable solution. And when you add that during this entire time, the rich got richer while 50 million or more Americans lost their jobs and had to go on unemployment compensation, well, then you really are looking at a system whose decline is accelerating. And that's the reality that we're living with. Don't be fooled by politicians distracting you, focusing you somewhere else, finding some scapegoat to blame. 
The problem is the system. And what we're seeing now is the big picture making that very clear. This is Richard Wolff from Democracy at Work with another Wolff response.